Hey there, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. Today, I'm going to talk to you again about the Bukla suitcase. More specifically, about the 281T in combo with the 257T. I already talked about the technique I'm about to show you in other videos, but I never did one that was specifically about it. The idea here is to bend curves, as one of the downside of the 2D one, for me anyway, is that it only creates linear functions. Let me set it to loop. So now you can see on the oscilloscope here that the attack time as well as the decay have a very linear curve. Here I'm using it to control the opening of this VCA. Linear curves are not perceived very well by the human ears as being punchy. The thing is that our ears listen to the sound in an exponential manner. So any sound that has an exponential decay will be perceived as more punchy than one with a linear or logarithmic one, which only exists in synthesizer anyway, I guess. So let's make a little sequence. And I'm going to show you how we can make our decay time exponential. And what kind of difference does it make? So what you need to do this is to melt the output of your envelope generator and patch it to an attenuverter. Attenuverter it's, it's better because you can then choose. And now we need to patch the output of this to the parameter that we want to affect. So it could be attack or decay, we will do both. But first let's start with decay. So now, if I increase the amount of feedback in a positive manner, I'm starting to get a logarithmic or anti-exponential curve. It also makes the envelope longer. But if I go on the other side, you can see it starts to make a very snappy and short envelope. You then have to adjust your timing, of course. But I really love a very exponential envelope, because it really gives you that ding, almost raindroppy kind of sound. So here we have linear attack and exponential decay. Let's make a logarithmic attack and exponential decay as in the uh, Roland ADSR, for example. So let's uh, melt again. If you use the same signal, you will have the same thing applied. If you use two of the channel of the 257, you can then yeah, make those kind of uh, shock toot. about the 257 is that you can add other stuff. So let's create a cycle. This one being linear. And let's patch it over there. And then we can add this to the game. 
So the feedback path make it exponential with this change the overall length. Let's do the same with the attack. The ramp function here. You can st start to have quite a funky envelope. Let's just add one cycle. Ratcheting. We have another oscillator here. This one will be low pass mode. What I want to show you now is how to use uh, those two. So let, let's do, let's start by making it exponential again. Just have to do this. Done. But now what we could do is to decide that we want to control how exponential it is. In order to do this, we need a VCA. I could use the QMG because it's DC coupled, but let's use this channel as we are in Bookla land. Uh, let me, th this time I will use a row, uh, let's use this one, a row of the sequencer as my control. So each step will have its own curves. So let me put it long because it will make it shorter. Increment. Get really see. Yeah. And this is quite a cool thing to do. I love it. Both channel in low pass gate mode. Lots of fun to be had with those envelope things. Last trick. So that you can do it with the oscillator as well. So yeah, I wanted to show you that we can use this technique to change the waveforms of our oscillator. I'm not going to make anything musical to demonstrate it, I just want to quickly show it to you. Okay, here we have our sine wave. If I patch it back into a control input, depending on how I set the attenuator, I will get some new curves. Well, it will completely destroy your pitch and uh, kill the 1 volt per octave probably. But you can then, anyway, if you sequence it from um, unquantized source, it doesn't really matter. 
And once again, you can control this. fun. Let's add some FM. today. Thanks for watching. The reverb you will hear at some point will be a good old Valhalla vintage verb in the new place mode, because I like it. And uh, see you next time. Bye bye.